Hi and welcome back to the Canon EOS 500D2 and IAKIS X3 tutorials. Um, for the next one, maybe two videos, I just want to cover some ground on some of the more technical items um, which will probably come up in the field guides as well. So things like white balance, um, exposure, shutter speed, aperture, ISO and so forth. Just so we've got some knowledge coming forward um, to the next videos in the series. Um, I would also like to ask for some better weather. <laughs> Because wind and rain don't make for good shooting conditions because none of the equipment I've got is waterproof or windproof really. Um, so bear with me while I try and find possibly an indoor location to do some of these videos. Um, so to start us off, um, I want to cover some of the more basic elements of exposure. And I've had a couple of questions on YouTube asked recently um, about exposure, how do you change exposure, how do you shoot in manual mode. But just to lay down some of the basics as we go on into the in, your, in the field guys with the 500D uh, want to cover exposure. Now there's three elements which actually make make up your whole exposure. Now these three different elements or three different um, items are your shutter speed um, which is the amount of time that your shutter is actually open to let light in so it's uh, otherwise known on the Canon system as time value TV and aperture, um, which is the size of the opening of the lens that determines how much light can get through. Um, so think of it as a smaller or larger hole. The larger the hole, the more light gets let through. And also ISO, um, which is the sensitivity of the sensor. Um, so that's like turning the gain up on a uh, microphone or amplifier, if you like, in terms of sound. You get a little bit more background noise or hiss similar as you would with a camera, you get more noise in the image as you turn that up. So those three elements, shutter speed, aperture and ISO um, make up for your actual exposure. Um, so we'll have a look at those in a little more detail if we just go to a diagram now. Okay let's have a look at this quick diagram which I call the exposure triangle. Um, we have these three elements which make up your exposure, we've got ISO shutter speed and aperture. Um, okay, Aperture also controls depth of field as well which we'll cover in a future video and shutter speed is something you would probably bear in mind as well if you're shooting a uh, fast moving subject, maybe wildlife, uh, sports, cars, um, other motorsport as well or possibly um, sports like football. But these three elements, your ISO shutter speed and aperture um, actually make up your final exposure. So looking at these a little closely, or a little more closely, if we have, say, a correct exposure of 1 25th of a second, an aperture f5.6 and ISO 100, so we'll say, for example, that that is our correct exposure, then we've got those three elements set. So 1 25th of a second, that's how long the sensor is exposed to light for, f5.6 your aperture, how large the opening is, how much light it lets through, and your ISO is the camera's sensor's sensitivity to light. So those three elements there, and we've got our correct exposure in this example. So if I now change the aperture to f8, I have reduced the amount of light coming um, into my lens by one stop, it's referred to as. So I've actually reduced the amount of light. I've gone to a bigger f number, a smaller opening in the lens. So now what I need to do to maintain my correct exposure I need to change one of these other values. So I've changed my aperture, say, because I want a greater depth of field. So now to maintain my correct exposure, I need to either reduce my shutter speed, uh, which I could do now to one stop reduction, which would be 1 60th of a second. So we go 100th, 80th, 60th of a second. Or I could actually um, increase my ISO to make it more sensitive by one stop, which would mean going to ISO 200. So it's a balancing that. If you make one change to one of these factors, once you've got your correct exposure, you need to make a change to one other of those elements to maintain your correct exposure. And like I say, it's a compromise sometimes. It's a balancing that, um, you know, given how what you're shooting, be it fast moving, um, how much depth of field you need. And also with ISO, you would also consider the amount of noise um, that may appear in the image should you start to increase the ISO to the higher, higher levels. Okay, 
So I mean, hopefully this gives you a little bit of a better idea. Um, so what we'll do, um, just to finish off this video, we will go to the back of the Canon 500D and just show you these number values as they show up on the back of the camera. Okay, welcome back. Um, just looking to see what you would see on your camera, um, we're going to have a look at the back screen. Now, I can't look through the viewfinder um, because this video camera won't focus through there. And generally what you will see when you look through there is the shutter speed, which will be shown as 1 2 50th or whatever the value is, of a second, f, which is your aperture, 3.5, 2.8, whatever the aperture is, and your ISO value as well. You will also see this meter bar here, um, but we'll cover that one at a later stage. Okay, so currently, camera's in manual mode just for the purpose of this demonstration. We've got the camera f3.5, and remember that that's the opening within your lens. So f3.5, let's say that, let, let's uh, that much light through. Okay, ISO 100, which is the sensitivity of the camera sensor or the gain of it, and your shutter speed. So looking at shutter speed quickly first. Now we change the value using that top dial, the roller dial, which is just behind the shut release on the 500D. And let's say those two values. I want to keep the same, okay. But when I take a picture at one two fiftieth of a second, it's a little underexposed. So what I can do to correct that is to slow the shutter speed down, which will increase the amount of time that the sensor is exposed to a certain amount of light, which is determined by the ISO and your opening on your aperture. Okay, so we can slow that down to bring exposure up. Okay, just bear in mind when you do bring the shutter speed down to certain levels that hand holding then becomes more difficult because any kind of movement of the camera um, will actually create a blurred image, certainly moving of your subject. Same thing on the flip side, if we were um, overexposed, okay, then we could change that shutter speed value up to increase the shutter speed okay to then correct for that overexposure now these figures aren't exact or anything it's different for different lighting conditions different subjects that you shoot so moving on to aperture now to change this in manual mode and um, just so you know you have to press and hold this AV button or the exposure compensation button here which is just above the live view button and then use the roller wheel again so let's just say that 1 2 50th of a second ISO 100 I'm still uh, overexposed so okay I can actually close down the aperture okay so as that number gets bigger the lens opening is now closing down to actually correct for that okay and on the other side of it, if I did want to increase exposure, then I could open up the aperture to let more light in. Now, this lens that's on there, the 18 to 55 kit lens, only opens up to f3.5. Other lenses that you can buy open up to f2.8, 1.8, f2, f1.4, or f1.2. You know, it varies. It depends on what that lens is and how fast that lens is. And when we say fast, the lower the f number. Okay, the wider that aperture, so the wider that hole, then the faster that lens is, it lets more light in. Okay, which is quite appropriate and great for low light photography. Unfortunately, those lenses which do let a lot of light in cost a lot of money. Can't have everything, eh? Okay, moving on to ISO. So let's say we've got 250 of a second, f3.5, and I want to keep those values. Okay, it could be because I want to freeze motion and I want a shallow depth of field. Okay, that's something else that we will cover. So the wider open your aperture, the shallower the depth of field. Uh, but I'm a little underexposed. So here's where I could increase the ISO. So by pressing the ISO button just behind that roller wheel, which is next to the control dial here. Okay, we can actually increase that value like so to increase exposure. The same, if you wanted to decrease exposure, we could take it down, but it only goes down to a certain level. Remember, as we increase the ISO value, camera becomes more sensitive to light. 
but also noise will increase in the image. You may well notice that I've got these two options here, 6400 and H, oops, disappeared, which is 12800 equivalent. They are actually unlocked within the custom menus, so if you watch the early videos it will show you how to do that. So that's just a quick introduction onto what values actually affect your exposure. That's your shutter speed, your aperture and your ISO. Before I forget I'll set that back down to 100. I don't want to shoot anything at 12800, thank you. Okay, so those three values um, actually affect your overall exposure. Like I say, and as we go through these tutorials, um, we will explain why you would choose certain values or you know other considerations over the settings and numbers and values that you put in for your final exposure as well. Um, but this is just um, a basic guide, just so you have a basic understanding of what three elements actually determine your overall exposure. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Um, hopefully that gives you some basic understanding of exposure, at least enough so we can go forward um, with the future videos um, on the tutorials, be it in the field guide. Um, I will be covering it in more detail as I go on in the field or shooting examples, um, but I wanted to get some kind of foundational knowledge um, laid down first. Um, so uh, thank you very much for watching. And of course, as always, if you do have any questions, then post them below. Um, send me an email or a message via YouTube or the website and I will do my very best to answer them. Um, so uh, until the next one, I'll see you soon.